in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall you welcome to another spirit filled message on christocentric message if you're new to this channel i would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well i would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth it's going to bless you your graces are going to be imparted onto you and then god is going to visit your home thank you for watching stay blessed says the Lord in the midst of his people is mighty father we lift up holy hands and we bless your name we bless you because you are king we bless you because you are God kingdoms will rise and fall men will rise and fall but you remain the king eternal we bless you we bless you we honor you even tonight and we pray that you will speak to our hearts, bless us, and be glorified. In Jesus' name I pray. Let's give Jesus a big hand clap. Hallelujah. Thank you so very much, Foundations of Sapphire, for granting me this privilege to be here. It remains an honor to bring God's word to us. And um, I want to thank the leadership. Thank you so very much for this privilege. I also want to thank my dear friend and brother, Pastor Nat, for such an amazing time of worship. Let's give him a big God bless you. My assignment tonight by the Spirit of God is to charge our hearts. I have a passion to help people serve the Lord sincerely but i realized that you cannot serve a god that you do not love and you cannot truly love a god you do not know and so the journey starts from helping us to know god and then we love that god we have come to know and we serve that god we have come to love hallelujah praise the name of the lord and so in line with your team i want to consider very briefly tonight a topic that I believe will be a blessing and will help us to be effective in our work with God effective in our service to him and to help build a very rich Christian life in the name of Jesus Christ Psalm 145 and verse 3 Psalm 145, we'll look at three scriptures. I'm teaching on the topic, unto the king eternal. Unto the king eternal. I'd like us to explore for a few minutes the extent of the greatness of this God, hoping that at the end of our discussion, praise will rise from our heart truly to this great God. It says, great is the Lord and greatly to be praised and that his greatness is unsearchable someone agree as you say amen. amen that the greatness of our god is unsearchable he's not only great he's not only deserving of our praise but the bible says his greatness is unfathomable unsearchable second scripture first corinthians 29 11 and 12 first Chronicles, my apologies, First Chronicles 29, 11 and 12. Profound scripture. First Chronicles 29. It says, Thine, O Lord, is the greatness and the power and the glory and the victory and the majesty. It says, For all that is in the heavens and in the earth is thine. Thine is the kingdom, O Lord, and thou art exalted above it all. Verse 12 is very inspiring. It says, both riches and honor come from thee, and thou reignest over all. 
it says in thy hand is the power and might and in thy hand is the power to make great and to give strength to all scripture number three first timothy chapter 1 and verse 17 unto the king eternal we're looking tonight at the greatness of our god the bible says now unto the king it is amazing how paul puts it here it was enough to just say he's a king but what then would be the difference between him and all other kings he says this king is so unique in that number one he is the king eternal that's a very profound statement because most kings only last for as long as they are alive and he says this king is eternal then number two this king is immortal if you know anything about the study of kings and kingdoms most kings and kingdoms pride in the ability to be able to manipulate the invisible realm in fact when you study classical greek mythology they teach on the reincarnation of kings they pride in the fact that they have the ability to still circumvent their way around death and return back but most of them have their graves full of the bones of such kings the bones together with the gold and the ornaments that they wore even at the point of death as proof that no matter how they felt about themselves they were still mortal but the bible says this king is immortal the empty grave today remains a testament that he's a king immortal every other king and every other kingdom where we can find as much as history has shown us they can show us where the kings died and upon investigation we can find their bones and their remains as proof that most of them did not have power beyond the grave and yet this king is called the king immortal then the bible says he's the king invisible this is profound every king had a location where he could be found he could be found in palaces or in their various hiding places they could not be everywhere but the bible says this king is invisible invisible does not mean unreal invisible means beyond the realm of sight then the bible calls him the only wise god not the only wise person the only wise god because it is of his fullness we have received but that among the gods like the psalmist who said there is none like him the only wise god and he says if you understand everything he said there are two things you have to accord him be honor and glory and that you do that forever and ever let's say amen, amen. hallelujah the quality of your christian experience and even your faith walk depends largely on your experience with god i have seen this through scripture through history and even through my own experience by the privilege of god's grace no believer can excel spiritually beyond the level of your experience with god no believer no matter how well intentioned will excel in life and in any endeavor beyond the level of your experience the impact of your experience that you have with god is what translates to the excellence as far as your spiritual life is concerned and like i did say an encounter with god or an experience with god would help you to know him and that when you know this god truly you will love him loving god was never supposed to be mechanical it was not supposed to be something you prime people and try to force them it was it was designed to be a reaction it's impossible to love genuinely without having knowledge of that god because when you understand him then you will love him and from that love you will desire to live for him and to serve him the moment you corrupt this formula something happens with your christian experience it becomes always mechanical and it just becomes a journey full of burdensome rituals that you know god then you love him then you live for him 
as you serve him all your days. Do you believe that? Yes. Hallelujah. So the quality of our Christian experience depends on the experience, the depth of our encounter with God. The second thing I want you to know is that the kind of God revealed to you through your experience or through your mentorship is the kind of God you will reveal to your world. The kind of God revealed to you through your experience or through whatever kind of mentorship is the kind of God you will reveal to your world. Are we together now? You will always reflect to the world of men the quality or otherwise of the God who has been revealed to you. If you encounter a hazy God who does not seem to be very defined, you will reveal that confusion to your world. If you encounter a mighty and powerful God, you will reveal that might and power to the world. So, the challenge with the witness of the average believer is not necessarily that our witness is ineffective, is that our encounters are not strong enough. So, we reveal through us um, many lopsided dimensions of God that cannot convince the nations enough that he's king of kings and lord of lords you read through the bible both old and new testament everyone who encountered god went in the strength of the conviction and the confidence that that encounter provided for instance when moses met god in the you know at the back side of the mountain that became the basis of his confidence as he went to Pharaoh. When he stood before Pharaoh, here's what he said. He did not discuss an opinion. He said, Thus saith the Lord God of the Hebrews, let my people go. That kind of audacity cannot just be from a normal human knowing the extent. I hope you know that Egypt was the then world superpower. And Pharaoh was not just a normal human being. Pharaoh was a wizard. Moses was being trained to be the next Pharaoh. So he had an understanding. He knew everything about Egypt, the vastness of Egypt. It was in Egypt that you could learn the various ways to torture men. You could bring out truth from anybody you wanted. They mastered the art of being wicked. So for Moses to stand before Pharaoh, he needed an encounter. That's why when God sent him, he refused. He said, I'm not going until you let me know who is sending me. I know the man who I'm about to face, but I'm not, I don't know the one who is sending me to face him. I know Pharaoh. I know Egypt. I know the mayhem that can be meted out upon a man. I hope you know the reason why he ran away from Egypt was because he killed a man. And he knew the consequences that will follow. So he ran away. And you're saying now you're asking me to go back to a place where my history can be referred to. Who is sending me here? And he said, I am that I am. He said, go and tell Pharaoh. And Moses went on the strength of that encounter. How about Jacob in the Bible? Are we together? How about Gideon, the man who was hiding even though there was a warrior there? New Testament, or at least when Jesus was there, the woman at the well, remember? Weak woman with all kinds of things, but when she encountered God, Jesus, the word incarnate, the Bible says that encounter was so impactful, she left her fetcher and everything. Her priorities shifted overnight. She ran to the city and said, come see a man who told me everything I had done. Do I talk about Paul as Saul? Who thought he was doing God good by killing Christians? And he went, do you know what it meant to go and obtain a letter from the high priest? Give me permission so that as I kill, I don't go to jail. And they granted him that permission. And on his way to Damascus, hallelujah, the Bible says he had an encounter. That was the man who became one of the chiefest defenders of the faith. Hallelujah. So your encounter with God is very important. Generally speaking, um, maybe I should digress for a minute and say something that I think would, would really tie up to what I'm teaching. Not every spiritual knowledge is useful for the believer or to the believer. 
In learning God and exploring spiritual things, it is important for us to narrow our knowledge to that which is recommended within scripture and that which makes for our edification. The blind pursuit for spiritual knowledge will only end us in confusion and delve us into sometimes many practices that are not of the Christian faith. The believer is not given the liberty to just learn anything just because it is spiritual. Are we together? There are boundaries given as far as our learning God is concerned. And if you do not learn God and the kingdom the right way, eventually you will find out that you are full of knowledge, ever learning, but never coming to the knowledge of the truth. Are we together now? We are a people of vast knowledge. We have access to many kinds of knowledge. But do you know that the kind of knowledge we have versus the reality of dominion, the life of God that comes from us, does not seem to match? There is a lot of supposed communication of knowledge. As far as your dominion and my dominion is concerned on earth, the knowledge that we need is very exact and very defined. Is it right, all right if I just run a list with you? Because I think many believers do not know what to learn about God that translates to power and dominion. And because unfortunately we live in a world that sells all kinds of knowledge, psychology has its body of knowledge, respectfully speaking, sociology, spirituality is like saying science. Because if we take spirituality alone, we have to break it depending on what religion and who you are listening to and then depending on what perspective. And so the average believer is really confused as to what body of truth do I need to explore to know God and then to become wholesome in my Christian work. Please allow me to just spell out a list for you that guides your spiritual pursuit towards a very profitable Christian life. Are we ready? Number one, the first dimension of knowledge every believer must press for is the knowledge of God through Jesus. The knowledge of God through Jesus, his son. The most accurate way to know God is to study Jesus who came as a revelation of God. The hymn writer says, Oh, come to the Father through Jesus the Son. Are we together? Now, there are many, many texts that help to guide our understanding about God. Some biblical, some extra biblical. But based on the authority of scripture, any believer who wants to know God and then walk in victory and walk in dominion, in order of spiritual priority, every time you pursue spiritual knowledge, the first part of call should be your passion to know God and that through Jesus. That means we use Jesus as the lens with which we explore God. It is dangerous to try to learn God outside of Jesus Christ. The reason is because Jesus is the most accurate reflection of the character of God. Every prophet and every other person who came before Jesus, um, their knowledge was tampered by their, the vista, their revelations. They made mistakes in their assessments of God. It is not everything the prophet said about God that was accurate. Jesus came as a marking script to correct our understanding about the God we did not know. Are we together now? When you read scripture, you will see that there were many things that were credited unto God by the prophets. But now looking at their understanding about God through the lens of the person Jesus, we see that they did not get, because they were humans and they were growing too, even spiritually. Paul said we see in part and we prophesy in part. When you understand God through the lens of Jesus, a lot of confusion comes to end. At least you forbear with all the prophets who made mistakes. They were students too learning God. So you would read things, for instance, like a lying spirit came out of God. That is inconsistent with God's character. Doesn't mean to throw away the prophets who revealed it, but clearly we see from Jesus that he was full of grace and truth. That settles it once and for all, that guile is not found in God. Is someone learning now? 
I, I'm saying this because there are many believers learning things that are useless and unnecessary as far as their spiritual growth is concerned. That knowledge does not help them know God, nor does it help to live excelling spiritual lives. So my digression is an attempt to help coordinate our pursuit that in our wanting to press for knowledge, there are exact things we should be looking for. And in order of priority, number one is to know God. The Bible says, let not the wise man glory in his wisdom. Are we still together? Let not the mighty man glory in his might. Let not the rich man glory in his riches. It says, but let him that glory glory in this, that he understandeth and knoweth me. It is a great investment to the believer when we know God. The knowledge of God. John chapter 17 and verse 3, Jesus was praying and here's what he said. This is life eternal that they may know thee, the only true God, and Jesus whom thou hast sent. This is life eternal that they may know thee. Hallelujah. If your phone begins to ring now and someone calls you, and says, I am Joshua Selman, can we talk? You can call him a liar immediately. Not because you are seeing me preach here. Your knowledge of me, no matter how detailed or no matter how vague, you know that at this time I should be preaching on a stage somewhere, not somewhere trying to call someone. So your knowledge of me helps you to know what I can do and what I cannot do. You see, the knowledge of God is very powerful because that is the key to escaping error. That is the key to detecting deception even within the end time. You cannot be able to detect vague from accurate, fake from real when you do not know God. Is God speaking to someone? Number two, the second dimension of spiritual knowledge we must press for, my God, I pray that you get this one, is that you must know yourself in light of who Christ is. This is not elementary at all. Something happens to a believer who does not know who he has become. That when you stood to confess Christ, and as you began to engage yourself in the ministry of prayer, this is a prayer conference, and as you began to engage yourself in studying the word, coming to church, that there is a kind of believer you have become, and there is a kind of believer you are becoming. It is important for you to know the name of what you have become now. Identity crisis is one of the greatest destroyers, particularly in our generation. Because if you do not know who you are, and you have to wait for the lens, the definition about you by systems and structures, especially this antichrist system, you will live a depressed and a frustrated life forever. Our world has a way they define anything. They can call God Satan, and so the name becomes. They can call good evil and so the name remains. You must know who you are, especially when you desire to serve the purposes of God. You must know who you are in light of who Christ is. The Bible calls the believer many things. For instance, it tells us that we have been brought into oneness with Christ. For many people, this is a theoretical knowledge, but honestly, the day you come into that understanding that you have become one with Christ, one with Christ, and then the Bible talks about your positional advantage, exalted with Christ, my God, exalted with Christ, seated with Christ. Let God be true. Whether you feel it or not, this is a spiritual reality. This is what the Bible says. How about Jesus calling himself the vine and calling yourself the branches? The branch is the fruit bearing part of the, of the vine. The branch is what gives credence to the health of the tree. You know that a tree is healthy, not when you look at the roots, when you look at the branch. He calls us ambassadors. He calls us light. He calls us salt. Maybe I should say it this way. He calls me light. He calls me salt. I can't generalize. I don't know what you believe about him. Are we together? He calls me the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. He calls me an ambassador. Something happened to the church when we started downplaying these things by calling them elementary. It corrupted our confidence. You have to stand strong 
in what the Bible has said about you. This is what the Bible says. The Bible calls me victorious. I say I'm victorious. The Bible calls me light. I say I am light. Is someone learning tonight? The Bible calls me more than a conqueror. I don't know what you understand by that. That means the end of every situation in my life is victory. Ah. That includes every financial situation. That name already predicts your future or reveals your future. That no matter what is around your life, your children, the end of it, you know that until you win, the story is not over. This is the believer. Not knowing this alone, you cannot serve the purposes of God because there are systems assigned to bully men out of their confidence. Situations will look at you, your five years unemployment will look at you, Satan will partner with that situation to call you a failure. The devil ever calls you a failure? Find out the investment that was put for your salvation. That tells your worth. If I drop one million naira to pick a product, it means I value that product more than the money I'm willing to lay aside. So look at what God put on ground to get you back. That tells you your worth. That not even the tears of Jesus could stop his passion for you. Jesus cried and he said, you still cry, I still want man. Do you believe this about yourself? I really do. I believe this about myself. I have loved you with an everlasting love. And with my loving kindness, I have drawn you. Believers, we must take time to know who we are in Christ. Not who you are by your natural descent. Because if you explore yourself just from an anthropological standpoint or a historic standpoint, you may be full of bad news. Especially if you came from a family that, you know, doesn't seem to have anything. But that the coming into the faith life is an advantage. It doesn't matter where I came from. Doesn't matter what idols they worship. Doesn't matter the limitations there. I have been grafted into Christ. A translation happens when a believer gets saved. What else does the Bible say about you? That if I am planted in the house of God, that I will flourish in the courts of my God, Psalm 92, that even in old age, I won't deplete with time. No, that economy does not work with me. There is no such thing as rising and going down. No, no. In old age, he shall be fat and flourishing. Do you believe that? Let me borrow from a sermon I preached back home. Joshua chapter 14 and verse 11. This was Caleb speaking. And may this be a prophetic word for someone tonight. Read with me please. One to read. As yet I am as strong this day as I was in the day that Moses sent me. As my strength was then. Even so is my strength now. For war and to go out and to come in strength strength that remains if you don't know who you are you will adopt templates that are antichrist so the moment you clock to 50 you expect to fail you expect to die you expect your body to be deteriorated now i don't mean to insult you but your reality is based on your revelation of god the ancient of days has been on his throne, not depleting. How about the sun? The sun stands for us as an example of what glory should look like. The sun is older than everyone on earth, and yet it's never diminished. Are we learning now? Time is not supposed to be a cost to greatness. No. Don't expect to diminish with time. Refuse that understanding who you are in Christ he says though your beginning be small though your beginning be small that is how it works in the kingdom no believer should have a better yesterday no your yesterday should not be better than your tomorrow that you only make history to yesterday like Job and say oh that I was in the days of my youth is your responsibility to hold on to the forces of the scripture and insist this is who God has said I am Knowledge number two, 
Are we learning? The third kind of knowledge that I think every believer must press to have is the knowledge of the role that you have to play in God's prophetic program. I cannot emphasize this enough. The cure to complex, the cure to low self-esteem, when you know that i don't just count i am not just a number on earth i'm not just a number in lagos i'm not just a number here at foundations of sapphire i count you must know that you have a role even if you don't know what that role is settle it for a fact that god is not wondering what to make out of your life it says while you were in your mother's womb jeremiah chapter 1 and verse 5 before you came forth it says i called you and I ordained you to be a prophet to the nations. Imagine the world without Billy Graham of blessed memory. Imagine the world without Reinhard Bonke. Imagine the world without Papa De, uh, you know, Papa De Boy. Imagine the world without Pastor Nathaniel Bassi the sounds, the songs, the melodies. Imagine the world without Joshua Selman. You think I won't talk about myself? You're joking. <laughs> Imagine the world without you. It is good to celebrate people, but not at the detriment of your identity. You have to believe that you count. You have to believe you are not just a number occupying space. And don't, don't allow ignorant, naive people who don't know God to define. No, the one who sent you, sent you with an assignment. The Bible says there was a man sent from God. John chapter 1 and verse 6. There was a woman sent from God. His name was John. Verse 7 reveals his assignment. The same came for a witness to bear witness of the light that men through his witness might believe. My life changed when I realized I was not just a number. No, you don't just call the names of those alive and you hear present. Mm -mm. When you know God, you know yourself. These are the ladders that translate to dominion and excelling spiritual life. Hallelujah. You must know that you count as far as God's prophetic program is concerned. Number four, you must know the mysteries and the principles of the kingdom. This is what translates prophecy to experience. The conversion system of the kingdom. Mysteries and the principles of the kingdom. Matthew 13, 11. It says, it has been given unto you, my God, to know the mysteries of the kingdom, the principles of the kingdom. These are the keys of the kingdom. You may have heard me say there is only one key to the kingdom. It's not a principle, it's a person. That key is Jesus. No man cometh to the Father except by me. The only door into the kingdom authentic genuine door is jesus but that now that you are in the kingdom the same way there is a main door that grants entrance to your home is that true every house has a main door but when you step in there are other doors you don't enter a house to just stay at the lounge you want to explore the entire house because you will need to use the restroom you will need the living room you will need the kitchen so you can be in a house and just stand at the veranda or the lounge you have not maximized the potential in that house it takes one main key to get in but there will usually be a bunch of keys that grant you access to the other rooms so jesus is the key to the kingdom but when you get into the kingdom there are the keys of the kingdom are we together now these are the keys that translate eternal life to become an experience when you handle the key of favor when you handle the key of mercy when you handle the key of grace the key of wisdom combining these keys help you to explore the god life in such a way and a manner that reveals the glory of god in and through your life are we learning number five the fifth kind of knowledge you must know 
is that you must study man as the zenith of God's creation. In all your knowledge, if you do not understand men, you will be frustrated. Because everything happens upon the earth with respect to men. Not just with respect to God. Parenting with respect to men. Business with respect to men. Ministry with respect to men. Success with respect to men. Failure with respect to men. In order of priority, you know God. But ladies and gentlemen, you must know men. The Bible says the heaven of heaven belongs to the Lord. But the earth has he given to the sons of men. God's delivery system has always been men. And if you do not understand how it works, you can be frustrated. Even God, even though God has answered your prayer. Read the Bible and see the roles that men played in delaying and even completely stopping the manifestation of God's program as mighty as God is there were men who stood up and because God himself respects the order and the structure that he put his program was delayed and in many many you would see that there were many prophecies in the Bible that never came to pass it was not because God did not want it to come to pass the men who would partner with him you see that now it's important to understand men every time you say amen amen means let it be so but the dynamics is that the spirit and the bride says come the spirit is willing but the bride a human vessel must partner with god when god wants to bless you you can see a vision or you can see scripture saying that you are the head and not the tail i assure you if there is no human vessel to play to partner with prophecy it will never come to pass promotion comes from god but who gives you the letter demotion comes from satan but who gives you the letter lifting comes from god but who becomes a conduit my god we live in a world where most people do not respect the ministry of men. That right now, some of you, as you are praying and fasting, your answer is literally in an office. Not in the realm of the spirit. Your answer is literally in somebody's account right now as I speak. Your answer is in within the power of somebody's will. That's why God is called the father of spirits. Do you know why? Because there are times human spirits can be manipulated by Satan and demons to fight the program of God. You will need the father of spirits to access any human spirit and work out his purposes through it. It is the reason why we learn principles like relationship. Is the reason why we pray for graces like favor. Do you know why? Because excelling in this kingdom on earth is man dependent men dependent God promised you land in Lagos you are right but someone is sitting on that board and can choose to make life miserable for you do you agree with me yes the final knowledge that you need to have is that you need to know Satan while that looks very messy that is very important you need to know satan the bible says to be sober and to be vigilant be sober and to be vigilant the opposite of vigilance is carelessness nonchalance it says be sober be vigilant because your adversary the devil he roams around like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour jesus called satan the thief not a thief the thief that he comes to steal to kill and to destroy we never knew him as a thief we only knew him as wicked jesus added some more information about him that means there's something jesus wants us to know about satan do you know that most of our knowledge about satan was taught by jesus himself he taught about what happens when demons leave people he taught about the fact that satan was a murderer he taught about the fact that satan was the father of liars Paul was speaking to the church in Corinth and he says, I fear lest as Satan beguiled Eve through subtlety that he would deceive you from the simplicity of the gospel. That means Satan came and deceived Eve using a tool, subtlety. That's how Satan comes in. 
believers who are unaware of satan and how he walks let me tell you this satan is anything else but a fool you study just the earthwork of jesus and see the various ways satan manifested satan manifests through herod looking for jesus so he would kill him you would never see satan in the scene yet he was the one there behind how about peter peter you would never imagine that satan would take advantage of peter jesus looked at peter and said no this is not peter get thee behind me satan and i could imagine peter saying me with all this obedience and loyalty and compassion and he said satan has desired to sift you like wheat you don't have to be evil to be a tool in the hand of satan you just have to be human human that is undiscerning human that is ignorant when satan uses evil and it does not work he will use good the most important thing is to destroy the tool does not matter is the goal my god it's impossible to have this body of truth that i've told you now and live a defeated christian life it will not work that way most believers do not know god most believers do not know themselves in light of who god is most believers have not found their place in life and destiny and so they live sad miserable defeated lives most believers do not understand the principles of the kingdom they do not know how the kingdom system works i may have observed it once on this stage while preaching that for the most believers there is no accuracy to their practice of the christian faith they combine everything that looks spiritual for instance if an average believer is afflicted right now they are going to call anything that looks like god bible blood of jesus holy ghost power you know fire of, of god touching and agreeing sowing a seed and these things are not wrong but they all have they are they they have the roles that they play they are not all doing the same thing but because of ignorance we just combine everything and then one will work the danger is that there is no mastery because you don't even know which one worked was it my singing that produced this result was it my giving that produced this result was it the prophetic that produced this result you see we must rise to a higher level of spiritual accuracy do you know what your worship does in the spirit do you know what your prayer does in the spirit what is the difference between praying and worshiping should i choose one or combine both what roles do they play what was the difference between the church praying and what paul and silas did were the effects the same what role does my giving play in the realm of the spirit at what time should i do it for what is god challenging someone tonight knowledge because you see every time we learn god we see who we should be in light of who he is we're discussing the king eternal but i decided to digress just to press on this it is on from this list we can now see the value of learning god because your theme is attempting to explore the vastness of his greatness and his glory now that we have digressed to see this list just journey with me as i just touch on one or two things and then we'll pray for tonight is god helping someone please pray in the spirit while you are seated just in a minute that god himself will open your eyes to see blessed be the name of the lord hallelujah the word king or the word lord means one who has power by reason of inheritance or preeminence when you call someone lord as particularly when it relates to lords as royalties one who has power by reason of inheritance or by reason of preeminence and as a result honor and glory and service must be accorded to such a one you see that now so when you call someone lord the meaning of that is that you have come to acknowledge the vastness of his greatness and his power either by reason of inheritance like it happens to royalties or by reason of preeminence for instance conquest that you searched around and there was no one like that person so it's a status that he keeps holding i don't watch so much of sports but for those of you who watch wrestling 
there's what they call the title holder of something heavyweight or boxing boxing so someone becomes the lightweight or middleweight or heavyweight title holder and that person knows he's not free even though he's rejoicing because someone else will train himself to compete with him and he has to keep fighting to maintain that so when you call someone lord in a system it means that many other gods have tried but nobody has been able to take that title <laughs> are we together now you can call someone king but when you now call him king of kings lord of lords it was an ancient way to to show the extent of a man's greatness by contrasting him with other kings so here's how it although you can use it to mean we kings believers but classically it was a way of showing how great someone was so you use the word daughter of daughters to show that this is an exceptional child are we together professor of professors so before you talk about the one professor you you have to talk about others and then you now magnify him to pale the excellence of the rest when you call him king of kings you first have to have examine the other kings available and their kingdoms and their vastness then you now show what makes his own above all when you call him lord of lords there are many kinds of lords judges are called lords in many kingdoms you call their royalties lords but many of them are frail many of them are mortal many of them their reign is seasonal in the judiciary you retire once that is your birthday whether you like it or not once it's time on your birthday you go with whatever kind of honor but you are still out of the system so when you call him lord he's the monarch of the universe it's not that he made himself lord is that there's no other person who can be lord listen when it had to do with god swearing he checked he was willing to submit if there was anybody higher than him but not finding any he swore by himself do you know what that means that means the title is here if for any reason among the gods i can find any bell where are you and all the other gods but all of them fell pale look at what happened to dagon before the ark nobody manipulated that process by morning they found dagon on the ground does that look like what will happen in someone's life that everything that has exalted itself above the knowledge of god that in the course of this conference you will watch dagon fight fall before the god of heaven hallelujah praise the name of the lord now there are two things you need to understand about god if you want to understand the extent of the greatness of god you have to explore number one his wisdom number two you have to explore his power it's impossible for you to appreciate God as King and God as Lord until by scripture you are able to understand the extent of his wisdom and the extent of his power please give us Psalm 104 and for sake of time verse 24 Psalm 104 verse 24 unbelief is dying from someone tonight in the name of jesus the bible says oh lord how manifold are your works it says in wisdom thou has made them all the earth is full of your riches you want to appreciate this statement you have to read the first 23 verses and it tells you the artistry and the creativity that was invested in making this ecosystem that we call earth and then the bible says how manifold it's like a man trying to describe a man's result and he takes a deep breath and says how manifold can i continue how manifold are your works in wisdom thou hast made them even the earth is full of your riches proverbs chapter 3 from verse 19 and 20 i hope 3 19 and 20 please give it to us the bible says the lord by wisdom has founded the earth how did he find the earth by wisdom and by understanding hath he established the heavens 
verse 20 please by his knowledge the depths were broken up and the clouds dropped down as dew you want to see the wisdom of god have the privilege of traveling and while you are in the air you are looking on the ground as light as the cloud is for god's sake who is this god you need to stand and look at the trees no election nobody is president over them and yet their organization has not failed this is god you want to know who god is you see sometimes exposure helps you to sing his praises when you look at the trees when you look at the seas when you look at all the creatures to know that god himself made all of this then he now put man as the zenith of his creation when we talk about the king eternal you have to examine the wisdom that resides within him he is not a weak god he does not outsource his creativity it's within him nobody mentors him it's not that he goes to school to learn your knowledge depends on the 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 body of truth available to you are we together the knowledge of a doctor as a fresh graduate is not the same as the knowledge of a consultant god does not grow in knowledge he does not grow in wisdom you need to understand you will not meet a better god tomorrow no his part is not as a shining light no no it's your own part that is as a shining light because he is the one who is before you it's important to know that god is not a man just because he became a man don't forget that he was god before he became a man god does not learn who will teach him who will be the student what is the name of the school that will admit him by what parameter will you give him admission who will supervise him god for you so the bible says the king eternal the king immortal the only wise god that means when his wisdom shows for the wisdom of every other king stands pale hallelujah Amen. the only wise god you have to explore his wisdom i am amazed I, I i had the honor of studying the human body a bit one time and i had to take a deep breath i mean you would think those statistics are lies just take the brain for instance as a case study do you know that as whole as you are if something happens to your brain your body shuts down immediately what if your brain is healthy and your heart goes bad what if your heart is healthy and something happens to your blood look at the things that need to be in place at every given time to call an individual alive the technology is so powerful that you can sleep lose consciousness and still be alive try to create a product like that how great is our God sing with me how great is our God all will sing how great how great He's our God. Can we sing it one more time? How great He's our God. Sing with me. How great He's our God. How great. You want to see the wisdom of God? Call a doctor to the stage. Call a neurosurgeon. Call somebody who understands. Call a historian to tell you how this earth was before your arrival. Gather these people in their schools of thought. Buy from their knowledge. And at the end of their discourse, you will be on your knees. You will appreciate the vastness. Education was not just supposed to enlighten you. It was supposed to help you praise God more intelligently. The more of him you know on account of the knowledge you now have, the wisdom of God should cause men to praise God. Listen, you are a doctor here. Isn't it amazing how for eight hours you are literally doing a heart bypass? or literally i've had the opportunity to watch people saw the skull of a human being 
literally you would think they are butchering meat in an abattoir and that human being is supposed to come back to life they pick out the brain walk on it take out a tumor and you see the person lying lifeless this is borrowed wisdom because it's in his light we see light listen when you know God as the wise God you will know there is an answer to every problem I, I, are you understanding me there is a, I may not know the answer but there is a way ah there is a way I my wisdom may be limited but when I come to the king eternal the king immortal the only wise God listen to me that financial problem has an answer yes sir it does if you just explore Sophia human wisdom you will see the end of it the wisdom of man is a straight line it has an end you can get to a point where with all due respect even the leaders in the field will tell you we have not gone beyond this the Bible says has thou not known has thou not heard the everlasting God the Lord is that true the maker of the ends of the earth he said there is no such thing did you stop reading that part of your Bible? There is no searching. That means there are other things you have not yet seen in your life that God can do. Listen, do you know why testimonies are powerful? They show us what else God can do. When someone comes to testify, he captures a reality about God's wisdom that is bigger than your experience. It's why you join them to praise God. I didn't know God could go this far. Hmm. Yes, sir. That's the song. Iba o, Iba. Iba o. listen you know why many people don't worship in church is ignorance they have not explored the wisdom of God you study your Bible and when you are tired of studying the Bible look at all the men who are a continuation of your study ladies and gentlemen a woman takes in a seed she's still alive she doesn't have to die for the baby to grow the Bible says just as you do not know the way of the wind or how bones how does a seed bones that you cannot break with your hand but is formed in the womb of a woman and the womb does not have bone itself and yet bones come out of that womb listen mothers you've carried many children that same womb how do you carry a seed and then there is a separation between flesh and the organs start arranging themselves the heart does not go to the leg by mistake by what technology does this happen the only wise god listen when you know this it pays to follow that king because the same way he rearranges a human body he can rearrange any destiny he can put things the way they should be only ignorant men see this king as a burden no are we together and then a miracle happens when that baby is nine months for God's sake a living baby comes out detached from the mother few hours ago maybe minutes ago they were together if anything happened to that separation he would die now the baby is detached alive having his own life not needing the mother's life again One more time. Iba ho, Iba. Please listen. If the heavens and the earth were built by wisdom, 
anything you want to build within that ecosystem must also need the same wisdom are you seeing why many things cannot be built well your ministry and your organization listen please watch this if it took his wisdom to build the heavens and the earth and you want to do business within that earth ministry within that earth and you ignore the wisdom that created the very ecosystem wherein you dwell it is not wise that is going to be beyond just secular education you need to go to the fountain of wisdom and say lord can i draw from you the wisdom that created the heavens and the earth let me use it to create my business let me use it to create my home the bible says true wisdom is a house built anything that refuses to be built is not rebellion is lack of wisdom there is a kind of wisdom you are bringing that is not compatible with that result and the result is rejecting the wisdom he's saying there is a kind of wisdom we were mandated to obey the wisdom that comes from the king eternal do you know what that means that every time you stretch in prayer every time you stretch in worship every time you look unto him among the many things you should expect to be drawing is his wisdom the value of your prayer please listen the value of your fasting among the many things that must happen to believers as proof that they are growing is that the wisdom that created the heavens and the earth must begin to reflect in their lives and that has no respect for gender it has no respect for age when the wisdom of the ancient is at work in you it becomes clear to all and sundry that this wisdom is older than you that is the wisdom that dumbfounds principalities and powers we're going to sing this song again for one moment but let me show you a scripture ephesians chapter 2 and verse 10 and then ephesians chapter 3 and verse 10 here's what it says we are his workmanship created in christ unto good works which god had foreordained that we should work in them please give us chapter 3 and verse 10 to the intent let's read together please one to read that now unto principalities and powers in heavenly places might be made known by the church help me the manifold multi-layered wisdom multifaceted multifaceted don't tell me you are a Christian and you've met the Spirit of God and you've taken time to invest in prayer and the word beyond just checking your character. If I want to know you have received from God, I will use the index of wisdom. Nobody stays close to the king and becomes foolish. Not traditionally, not spiritually. No. Those who, do you know why those who are close to him are called 24 elders? They have crowns too like he has crowns. Don't tell me you've been around his presence and your decisions it is clear that the wisdom of the ancient is not there I'm saying that because as we're singing even if it's just for two three minutes what you should be expecting say Lord I'm tired of moving around in circles you are the king eternal I tap from this ancient wisdom I'm tired of using experience experience has defeated me a thousand times I need a, a downpour a pouring into my destiny the wisdom that created the heavens and the earth wherein I dwell can we pray for one minute? Please, sir, help me. Son of David, Shale Barato Sabra de Bebeca Parusiana. Blessed are thou, King of heaven. Barato Shale Grembe de Catosiana. Blessed are thou, Rock of Ages. Be prepared to draw. Be prepared to draw Blessed wisdom from the ancient of days. The King Eternal, the King Immortal, the King you Invincible. Are powerful, magnificently wonderful. I can go on and on, on and on. My words are not enough. My vocabularies will fail me. But permit me to cry out. Iba oh, Iba oh, Iba, Iba oh. 
understanding the second factor that we use to examine the greatness of every king is his power after examining his wisdom is he wise enough to be worshipped is he wise enough to receive adoration is he wise enough to be accorded praise is he wise enough to be extolled his works speak to the fact that his wisdom is ancient and the next area is his power the bible says in jeremiah 32 and verse 11 my god it says our lord god thou has created the heavens 17 32 17 our lord god thou has created the heavens and the earth i thought the bible says he created it with wisdom now the bible is saying it was not just wisdom it was wisdom and great power great power so it takes beyond wisdom to create things it takes great power great power in psalm 62 and verse 11 a popular scripture it says god has spoken once twice have i heard this that power help me power power belongs unto god power belongs unto god in deuteronomy chapter 26 from verse 6 deuteronomy 26 we're reading 6 to 9 quickly so that we can pray and the egyptians evil entreated us and afflicted us and laid upon us hard bondage verse 7 and when we cried unto the lord god of our fathers the bible says the lord heard our voice and he looked on our affliction and our labor and our oppression how did he respond the lord brought us out from egypt with a mighty hand and with an outstretched arm and with great terribleness and with signs and with wonders verse and and the lord brought us into i really like this scripture two words he brought us out of and he brought us into there are those who can bring men out of but they cannot bring men into the bible says he brought us out of bondage god can bring a man through great power out of pain out of shame out of curses out of yokes out of all kinds of things and then bring you into the manifestation of prophecy listen to me when you know god as king of kings when you know god as lord of lords when you know him as the king eternal the king immortal the king invisible the only wise god three things happens to you very quickly you may want to write if you're writing my apologies to keep you standing number one the first thing that happens to you is an impartation of the spirit of faith faith is a direct derivative of your revelation of god the spirit of faith anybody who encounters the king the king immortal you encounter his wisdom and his power you encounter him in his capacity as king of kings and lord of lords it will be impossible to be without faith hallelujah many of us have encountered great men in various capacities intellectually speaking financially speaking and on the strength of what we know about them we are not careful to take instructions from them because we know they have the power to defend what they say for instance if a billionaire you know who is benevolent and you are sure loves you says go and pick a car you will not say sorry say it again you will go in a hurry with joy and say it's an answered prayer your confidence is based on your knowledge of something about him when you doubt god is proof you don't know him when you doubt god is proof you need to know him more 
You know why you need to know God this much and have the spirit of faith? Because the just lives by faith. Exploits in this kingdom is faith dependent. There are no guarantees to anything in life. You are going to walk on water many times. Walk on financial waters, ministerial waters. And sometimes the sea will be boisterous and yet God will act like he's not seeing it. He wants you to be more conscious of his presence than the storms. But the people that do know their God, is that still in your Bible? They shall be strong. God is speaking to the women, even though he's speaking to all of us. This is a season where people of faith must come out and stand. I know God concerning my children. I know what God has said. The one who gave me these children. The one who gave me this job. So that you are not threatened by the vicissitudes of life. The spirit of faith. The spirit of faith. The first result for taking out time to know God. Are you ready for number two? supernatural empowerment the second thing you receive as a reward for pressing to know the king is empowerment how many of you know whether traditionally or otherwise that nobody visits a responsible king and goes back empty-handed no it's against even cultural customs of royalty that when kings are aware especially when they prepare for that visitor they are usually tokens it may not be financial but they can give you something that becomes an evidence to all men when people see this they know you have visited this particular king i have lots of gifts that are brought from several nations not even some of their kings just visiting the nation they give me things that are unique to the nations unmistakable you can't confuse it you can know this came from this nation show me your souvenir you met the king empowerment is one of the things we get when we meet him empowerment with wisdom and empowerment with power you don't just know his wisdom and power you draw from it and you go back and display that wisdom when moses encountered him he went with a rod it stopped being called the rod of moses it became the rod of god when he stood before the red he said moses why are you crying stretch forth your rod and tell the nation of israel to walk on dry ground power power the ability to do things the ability to make things happen the ability to make ministry happen by the spirit the ability to make your finances work the ability to push through power supernatural empowerment acts chapter 4 and verse 33 it says and with great power gave the apostles witness of the resurrection of the lord jesus and great grace was upon them all it takes great power to give witness to the fact that jesus is alive you are not just going to tell people he's alive you will have to show my god to demonstrate to principalities and powers someone came for this conference and i want you to know that just knowing that he reigns over all is not enough just knowing that he exerts dominion unquestionable dominion that revelation should do something to you that you live here empowered do you know as man you are the zenith of god's creation that means you should be the greatest reflection of his power not the trees in the forest their productivity should not outshine yours you are the zenith of God's creation. Hallelujah. Great power. Number three. What is the third result of knowing him as king? What is the third result of knowing him as Lord? Even the king eternal. Are you ready? Glory and praise. Glory and praise will spring forth from you eternally. When you know him as king. When you know him as Lord, glory and praise. Someone say glory. Someone say praise. One more time. Say glory. Say praise. Glory and praise and honor and even adoration. The Bible says all that men would praise the Lord. Psalm 107. All that men would praise the Lord. Psalm 150 from verse 1 to 6. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord praise the lord not praise an idol praise is a byproduct of revelation when you know 
his power when you know his grace and his glory the vastness of his glory you will praise him truly you will you will it doesn't matter whether you know how to sing or not there are times that a song will well out from your spirit even if it's a song that you just sing the first time and it dies there that song becomes a reaction not a special number I can't be silent, not after what I have seen. Not after what I've seen God now do through my life. Not just the one someone said he did, but now that it has come home to you. There are many people who will write songs here as a result of what God will do through your life. You will tell people, I'm not a musician. He's just been too powerful in my life. I had to write something. For someone like Miriam, you will write a song. I will sing unto the Lord, for he has triumphed gloriously. The horses and his rider has been thrown into the sea. Hallelujah. We need to know God. We need to know the King Eternal. He reigns forever. Let me tell you, this king that you serve will never be dethroned. Political systems will come and go. Governments will come and go. Men will come and go. Their pride will come and go. Their wickedness will come and go. The trouble that plagues you will come and go. But the king eternal, then the king immortal. Do you know what that means? You cannot trap him in one place and say he's not aware. He's here in this church and yet he's with your children. He's everywhere. The king, the limitations that come with mortality does not happen with him. He is not limited. In fact, my Bible says there are certain things that God did not share with man. His omnipotence was not shared with man. His omnipresence was not shared with man. His omniscience was not shared with man. These are the things that brand God in a class by himself. Man is not omnipotent. Man is not omniscient. Man is not omnipresent. In as much as we are partakers of his divine nature, there is an exclusive dimension to his nature that was not given to man. So our dominion is not absolute dominion. He can live without us, reign without us, do without us. But my God, we are helplessly dependent on him. That everything that is called God in us is derived. Even our knowledge is from his light that we see light. Hallelujah. When you know this, praise wells up from your spirit. Do you know why? Because you will never be a failure. Not with the king immortal not with the king eternal not with the king invisible the only wise god the bible says be honor and glory forever you will find yourself singing songs you will find yourself dancing with your children you will find yourself rejoicing and people say you are still singing in this evil world and you say i'm singing because wisdom has bailed me out i'm singing because power has delivered me from the desire of my enemies my god is someone really going to rejoice this year does someone really believe that for you the shouts of joy and victory will never depart from your tent because you are the righteous of God hallelujah hallelujah that when men are crying saying there is a casting down because you know the king eternal and you have drawn wisdom from him you have drawn power from him you will circumvent all the vicissitudes of life and you will find yourself just making progress is it not in your bible now thanks be to god which causes us how long always say always one more time always always that a time can come in the life of a believer and a time should come where you check your life and truly there are no prayer requests again your only prayer request is intercession for the loss or for others but as for you god has given you rest round about someone prophesy rest round about one more time rest round about listen 
I have to say this before we begin to pray and worship. I want you to believe God can sort a man. God can literally come to you and insist that you will not have anything you have to ask him for again as far as the matters that pertain to life is concerned. Do you believe that? Genesis 24 and verse 1. And Abraham was old and well stricken in age. Your Bible says the Lord had blessed him in how many things? All things. All things. All things. He spoke to Joshua. He said not one of the words that God spoke concerning Joshua failed. All came to pass. This is what the king does. Once upon a time, a woman in Luke chapter 18 went to meet someone who was a Lord. In this case, the Bible called George. Is that true? And she said, avenge me my advice. You are a George. You are a Lord. You have the power to avenge the wickedness of the wicked. The Bible says that man was such a cruel Lord. He did not regard God. He didn't fear God nor regard men. But that woman, that woman went to him and wearied him. And the man said, even though I do not regard God nor fear men, this woman by her continual coming, she will weary me. <clears throat> I've made up my mind that in my lifetime, my life will be a praise to the name of the Lord. That the wisdom that comes from knowing him must be demonstrated in my life and the power that justifies knowing him did you hear the use of my words the power that justifies knowing him there is a requisite level of power this power is not for preachers this power is not just for apostles and prophets if it is true that you have met the king the king eternal the king immortal the king invisible the only wise god the all-powerful god something must be deposited in your life it's time for that business to work it's time for your prayer life to work it's time for your spiritual life to work it's time for that marriage to work are there believers in this place it's time for your finances to work now hear me we are going to pray and i'll just allow pastor nad for maybe five or so minutes he's going to lead us as the spirit leads him in worship i will join in that worship too the king is here you see when the king comes everybody takes off their own crown no you don't find a when it has to do with the worship of the king that model was shown us in the book of revelations even though elders have crowns a crown is not a gift is a reward a testament of consistency a testament of bearing fruit but in the presence of the king you take off your crown and while you worship consistent with what we have learned even from culture the king arises in honor to the worship of the saints and when the king arises do you know the many things that happen if you've forgotten let me just tell you one let God arise if you can get the king to stand up from his throne the bible says for standing up whatever wants to stop you from singing that praise continually he, he becomes his enemy if it is finances he becomes his enemy if it's some sickness in your body the psalmist said if i die who will praise you i need to be alive to praise you huh. I want you to be angry in your spirit don't waste the next five minutes see what you are doing as an act of worship but two things one that you are pouring that alabaster box before the king but whilst you are doing that expect the king eternal immortal invisible the only wise god the all-powerful god expect him to arise don't tell him about your finances yet he's not blind don't tell him about your children yet. You just pour yourself in worship for the next five minutes. The time to make petitions will come after worship. No asking for anything. You are just pouring yourself in worship. And after that time is done, you will now speak. This was the strategy Esther used. If Esther went to the king and said, avenge me. 
something would have happened but she said king i have prepared a feast for you i want the nations to see how glorious you are this was a woman who they were about to kill her people and her uncle and then when that happened the king said can you do this again and one time she invited her man and said join that feast too the bible says when it was time for the feast of wines there was a kind of feast a woman who did not use sword yet she killed every enemy that fought god she used her worship she used her honor she used her praise that is the same extra dimension that we're going to get into right now are we together now and the bible says she turned and told the king that there is a traitor within your camp this man wants to fight the purposes ah! the king went to the garden to think about it because her man was his right hand man and the moment he returned he now saw the king kneeling before the queen he said you are even close to my wife again and that was the end of that man's story you see, but when God wants to disgrace darkness, leave him or he knows what to do. Yours is to just get him to arise from that throne in worship. Are you ready now? Pastor Nat, please, we leave the stage to you. As, as Pastor Nat leads us in this worship, don't ask God for anything. Just see yourself as Esther. Forget about her man. Forget about the diviners who have set a date for your destruction. Forget about those who said your children will not rise. Forget about those who want to scatter your marriage. You just worship the king. The king immortal. The king invisible. Listen. It is wrong to worship men. But it is not a crime to worship the king. Every king is deserving of his worship. Yes, sir. Lift your hands. Whenever the Spirit of the Lord is, inspires me to write a new song, it means he's in the room. Are you ready? <laughs> hey! Hey! That anointing came tonight.
listen if a prophetic song can leave heaven and come like this it means an idea can leave heaven and come like this it means a strategy can leave heaven and come like this who is God speaking to uh, it means an anointing can leave heaven and rest right now it means speed can leave heaven and rest on your life now it means breakthrough can leave heaven and rest on your life right now are you ready to pray now press for one minute go ahead and begin to make declarations petitions unto the king go ahead and pray let it be from the depth of your heart unto the king eternal immortal invisible the only wise god stepping over my finances stepping over my spiritual life stepping over my children stepping over my job stepping over every area of my life come on pray pray from the depth of your heart
the Bible says, I wept for no man was worthy to open the book and unlock the scroll. And an elder tapped me and said, weep not for the lion of the tribe of Judah, even the root of David, my God. I sense a strong anointing in this place. There are mountains that are bigger than you, but the king is about to arise. He's the king eternal, the king immortal, the king invisible. Someone pray, Lord arise for me, over my children, arise for me. Let this mountain give way at the shout of grace, 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 at the shout of grace. Please listen. Listen to me, all of you. Again, this prophetic act is not over yet. I'm going to ask Pastor not to blow a trumpet over you, and I will tell you why. Trumpets signify the end of a season and the beginning of the other. Listen. Even when the king returns is with the shout of the trumpet by an archangel. That is what will signify that this season has come. Now, when that trumpet comes, listen, this is what I want you to have in your mind. Look at the page of a book flipping. That means it doesn't matter how long that page of your destiny has been. Please, this is the imagination I want you to have at the back of your mind see it flipping he said remember ye not the former things nor consider the things of old for behold listen there are things that make a king a king there are emblems tokens one is his crown two is his scepter three is his throne you see that now there is no king without a crown there is no king without a scepter that is a symbol of power there is no king without a throne you will marvel at the testimonies that will come out of this prophetic because I'm sensing in my spirit that there are some of you as you came here you couldn't even listen to the sermon because honestly he says many are they that rise up against me many are they that say where is your help he says but thou O lord you are a shield for me you are my glory and the lifter up of my head he says be anxious for nothing but in everything there is nobody who has lived on earth and has not seen storms. There are times your enemies become bigger than you. You need to step back and call the king to arise. So as this, I'm also receiving this for myself. This is not tell them this. I'm only an usher. Don't waste this prophetic opportunity. Some of you are in debt. Some of you right now, your problem is not concerning you. It's your children something is wrong and the devil wants to use them to send you to your grave on time 
the bible says in everything there is nothing that you cannot bring before god and so as the trumpet comes i like you to see that page that the king the monarch of the universe the one whose authority cannot be contested the one who says and it becomes i want you to see him arise arise imagine yourself as the only person in front don't forget about your neighbor for one moment that the king is arising for you and he's saying what is it that ails you hold on as powerful as john the baptist was personat what the scribes and the pharisees could not do a worshippers worship a young girl during the king's birthday herod she danced and worshiped so much the king said kings were not fools but the king was willing to give half of his kingdom and she went to meet a wicked woman who told her i need the head of john on a platter and because kings don't retreat on their words even though he did not want it that was how the, the greatest prophet by jesus own um standard he went because of the head a woman danced and she knew how to provoke she didn't tell him i had a need she just celebrated him he felt guilty for leaving her to go back that way he said what do you want these are the mysteries of the kingdom they may not make sense but this is how results happen how does god give an instruction that you come and stand here is that how money will come for you is that how the court case will be reversed anybody who doubts genuine scripture based prophetic actions does not know god god does foolish things what does it mean to go around jericho how do you defeat a nation by going around once every day and then seven times at the end of it he said the healer shout that shout and the bible says the fence sang these are the mysteries of the kingdom how do you give and yet increase how do you withhold and yet tend to poverty is the mystery of the kingdom how do you praise him in a dance it says i will call upon the lord who is worthy of praise so by that formula shall i be saved from my enemy when the nations were greater than god's people jehoshaphat spoke by the spirit he said no this is not a battle that you will use sword let the worshipers lead the way and the bible says as they raise songs singing that you are good and your mercies endure forever god laid an ambush among the camp of the enemy that they began to kill one another as if they were not a team for someone who is tired of these mountains for someone who knows that the king eternal does not lie because he's not a man i want you to believe at the blast of the trumpet hallelujah that word halal yeshua is the word we are going to chant hallelujah means praise the lord it literally means halal yeshua invoke his power in praise invoke his majesty in praise are we together now does this make sense to you and so after personat blasts that trumpet we are going to shout a sevenfold hallelujah you just you just do what i'm asking you to do by the spirit and you will watch mountains i tell you it doesn't matter how long and don't say you are not in front here from the front to the back everyone participate in this yes sir who are thou mountain before Zerubbabel? Who are thou mountain before Zerubbabel? Before Zerubbabel, thou shalt go down and be made great at the shout of grace, at the shout of grace, at the shout of mercy, as the shout of the king. Mountains, you crumble before the God of Sabaoth. 
are you ready to shout hallelujah now listen i will prompt you and you will shout hallelujah at the seventh time i will do the declaration you would have done your own part so as i count one you shout hallelujah two you shout hallelujah you are not just reciting a chant it means halal yeshua let god arise let the majestic one arise over my case listen as you are shouting it i like you to see mountains going down see stories being rewritten are you ready now listen this includes those who are following i know there are many who are following online following in your home you may feel sad that you don't have the opportunity to be here at this exalted altar but don't you worry you can simulate an atmosphere of praise right in your house right in your car and whilst we are shouting if it means to park your car for one moment and obey this prophetic action and watch the god of heaven are you ready now number one Number two. Number three. Number four. Number five. Number six. Are you ready for the final shout? Number seven. Every mountain, every mountain standing before you. Ah, the king brings it down. so love I stand in faith with the graces that are here represented in this house and I declare for everyone who came here crying in the name that is above all names may my God wipe your tears may my God wipe your tears I pray for everyone here you are standing right in front of shame many have concluded that it, there is nothing that can be done i pray for you by this time tomorrow may the god of heaven rewrite your story by this time tomorrow may the god of heaven visit you in a way that will bring praise to his name hear me every financial calamity here I don't care how long it has been in the name of Jesus because the King eternal the King immortal has arisen may God raise men to bail you out I say to a believer may God raise men to bail you out may God raise men to bail you out in the name of Jesus hear me I've been a victim of sickness before 
there are diseases that are unto death there are sicknesses that the moment you see it on a person's body you know the spirit of death has come because the end of that sickness is death are we together now i want to cause those diseases whether in your body or that of your loved ones don't allow your loved ones just die for nothing take advantage of this atmosphere hallelujah that when you see people tell you there are certain things in my body you just know that the spirit of death has come in the name of jesus and by the mercies of the god of david anyone here with any infirmity cancer heart problems bone problems for you or for your loved one in the name of jesus christ we declare that death is caused from your life sickness and disease is caused from your body sickness and disease is caused from your body sickness and disease is caused from your body in the name of jesus for someone i'm hearing open doors open doors may not be for everyone but i'm speaking to someone who is a receiver may my god open doors for you destiny doors destiny doors even ancient doors may they be open heater and teeter the final prayer for you and you are back to your seat for someone standing here your problem may not be anything material it may just be that an attack came upon your spiritual life and in a strange way your passion for god just went down in a way that is still surprising you right now prayer life down word study life down consecration and your things for god down passion for the house of god down there needs to be a resurrection uh, because if the only thing you receive are just material things and restoration at the expense of your spiritual vibrancy it was a bad bargain bad bargain are we together hmm. these are the days when you need strength these are the days when you cannot lose your spiritual texture and fire it is a risk a risk that can cost you your life because the bible says be sober be vigilant for your adversary the devil that he goes to and fro that includes lagos searching and seeking for whom he will be devour. the question is what is the condition for his finding a victim while men slept that's the condition the enemy could not have come to plant but that men slept so the bible says awake thou that sleepest and christ shall give you light can i speak over your life in the name of jesus i agree with every grace here represented anyone's prayer life you used to have prophetic encounters and dreams because of the extent of your spiritual vibrancy right now that vista has been closed you don't see you don't hear you don't nothing i pray for you in the name of jesus the same way the hair of samson came back may your prayer life be restored may your passion for god be restored may your word study life be restored may your passion for the things of god the house of god be restored in the name of jesus thank you jesus wave your hands as you return back to your seat god bless you please return back to your seat rejoicing return back to your seat rejoicing hallelujah I'm going to step out of the way for one minute now and I'm going to allow Pastor Nat to just, even if it's for a minute or two, I just sense to see press on with this song for one minute. But who is in this place? Who wants to tell Jesus, I need you? Who is in this place? Who is saying, Apostle, if you will give me one minute with Jesus, I'm not ashamed ah no i'm not ashamed of the crowd i love jesus enough to leave my seat and come and stand here who is saying i need my relationship restored i'm tired of playing church and i mean business with jesus 
I'm calling for that one person. I'm going to count one to five. Please, I want you to leave your seat very boldly and come and stand here as we celebrate them. The king needs you. You need the king. Come. One. Don't sit back when you know the Lord is asking you to come and make it right with him. Come. It's a new season for you. Come. Is this the best we can do for them? Let's encourage them as they come. Two. Anyone who is coming this way, please. Three. Keep clapping. Four. Hallelujah. Now, listen, I want to thank you for this, the courage to make this noble decision. It is the greatest decision any man can make. You can receive breakthrough, but without Jesus, you are still going to hell. It's as simple and as honest as that. I want to thank you, my brothers and sisters, for making this declaration. Can you say after me as loud and as clear as you can say, Lord Jesus, tonight, I have heard your word. You are my savior. You are my Lord. You are my king. I declare that I love you with all my heart. I declare that I cannot help myself. Tonight, I receive your life into my spirit. And I declare that the power of sin, Satan, hell, and the grave is broken over my life from tonight i am a child of god i live for jesus all the days of my life i go forward ever and backward never in jesus name we pray father thank you so much for these precious ones who have come your word declares that as many who will come to you you will in no wise cast away lord we thank you for accepting them and we pray that the grace that makes men victorious that grace will remain in their lives as they go from glory to glory in jesus name we pray please do me a favor all of you may i request our uncle is there waving his hands the counselors will have a brief word with you for one minute and you are back to your seat let's honor them as they go hallelujah praise the name of the lord i understand there's a session tomorrow please I want to encourage everyone that includes those who are following there will be room for you to follow online doesn't matter where what part of the globe please make sure that you discipline yourself invite everyone please come see this conference as a retreat in as much as is organized by the foundations of sapphire but i believe that the blessings extend to everyone so open up your heart and let us receive maximally in this atmosphere pastor Nat, please thank you so much can we rise and celebrate the king? He's visited us tonight. We're going to sing that song again. Can you celebrate what he did tonight? He rejoiced about us with singing. Whenever a new song comes, new glory comes, you should celebrate.
for us kindly share with us thank you for watching